And what about this? Those who are of the remnant of Israelite believers, Joel chapter 2, who call on the name of the Lord will be saved, i.e. delivered from the temporal destruction of the day of the Lord. Remember, all of the church are gone. The day of the tribulation, the day of the Lord, seven years. Israel, now, is going to finish out the last seven years of her economy, dispensation. So you look at the tribulation period, where is the church? Lots of new believers, lots of violence, lots of death. Where are the Christians? They're not there. They're taken off the planet. New believers. Now there's also temple worship. During the period of the first century, church age notably began as the Jews and Gentiles joined together in a separate entity from Israel. Before that, Israel was in view. To the Jew first, Jesus came. And then to the Gentile. So the picture is now, the last seven years of the tribulation period, the Jewish period, are the same. Those who call are the remnant of the Israelite believers, who call on the name of the Lord, will be saved, delivered from temple destruction of the day of the Lord. They have to survive. They're believers. In order to become the priests, fulfilling the new covenant, which is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not with the church. We're part of the body of Christ. The new covenant. The old covenant, the law, we be replaced by God unilaterally upon what happening. All of the present generation of Israel at the Lord's second coming, believing, become believers, and they become the priesthood for the, all the nations of the world. So we have Joel 2, 32. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. Ah, see that word deliverance? That's another meaning of the word soteria, saved. Saved from what? Unto eternal life? No. Saved unto deliverance from early physical death by the violence going on in the seven-year tribulation period. As the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Notice that Mount Zion and Jerusalem and survivors are in view in the light of God's pouring out his wrath on the earth during the tribulation period. Hence, Israel is in view in an earthly and temporal context. So salvation here, deliverance, is deliverance of the remnant of Israelite believers from the temporal disaster of God's wrath being poured upon, out upon the inhabitants of the earth. And that salvation, that deliverance, will come if they call on the name of the Lord. At first, there'll be a remnant of Israelite believers that become new believers during that period after the rapture and the day of the Lord begins. And thereafter, the rest of the generation of Israelites in that period of time, at the second coming, will be a total 100% of all of them will become believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll become instantly transformed into long-lived, mortal-bodied people, perfect, sinless, and perfect knowledge of the Word of God to minister and co-rule over the Gentile nations as the priesthood of all the world with Jesus Christ. Okay, <clears throat> point seven, Romans 10, 14 to 15. Shall we go any further? Absolutely! He exhausted. This is exhaust the context. When we know we're in a new context, we'll know it. Not the time to quit. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So anybody who wants to talk about Romans 10, 9, and 10 that hasn't gotten this far, baloney. They're going to miss it. They're going to miss it. Construe it. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? First, you have to become a believer. Then you call on him. See, two different things happen. Become a believer by believing. Eternal destiny, heaven. Then you have the opportunity, as we know, with the Holy Spirit within you, and in any number of things, over 50 of them, happen to you at the moment of faith alone and Christ alone. Now you have the equipment to call on the name of the Lord, and he will answer and deliver you. How shall they believe in him, though, of whom they have not heard? So you can't believe in him until you've heard something. How about the gospel? You can't, if you're not communicated, 
toward you the gospel by writing or reading, hearing it, then you can't believe in something you haven't heard about. The information is not there in your mind. And But how shall they hear without a preacher? So somebody has to go out there and preach. So all those people during the tribulation period, day of the Lord, <clears throat> who are become born-again believers, somehow they'll pass on the information to others, either by reading or writing or speaking and so on. And how shall they preach, though, unless they are sent? So God has to send them. So first, we're doing this backwards, aren't we? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. See, there's the gospel. Who bring good news of good things. So first, somebody's got to be sent. Second, they've got to know the gospel, of course. They've got to preach the word. Third, you've got to hear it. The unbelievers got to hear it. Then they believe in, then they get justified by faith alone. Now they can call in the name of the Lord. So what is calling in the name of the Lord here? It's after you've got salvation unto eternal life and residence into the eternal kingdom, right? See how you get the context messed up if you don't read carefully? Only believers in the Lord unto eternal righteousness from God unto eternal life are in a position to call in the name of the Lord, the Lord, for salvation from temporal destruction and early physical death. And let me tell you, there are lots of people going to have an early physical death in the rapture, after the rapture in the tribulation period. Let's go back and review by verses to see if this affirmed. But now a righteousness from God apart from law has been made known to which the law and prophets testify this righteousness comes from God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. That's the gospel and salvation unto eternal life. There is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So you're covering your sins there and are justified, declared righteous with the righteousness of Christ in your credit to your account justified freely for by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. You need a redemption. Jesus paid for the sins. For with a heart one believes for righteousness, and with a mouth one confesses for salvation. Now what do you think the confesses is? Yes. Well, salvation, oh, now we know. Another meaning of salvation. After you become a believer, you don't have to confess Jesus uh, as Lord of your life to become a believer. You already are a believer. You confess for something else. What is that? Any additional benefits for rewards in heaven, blessed temporal life, not ex be exposed and delivered from an early physical death. Fellowship, temporal benefits, blessings, eternal rewards, spiritual growth. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall, will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and, and Greek. For the, the same Lord is over all, is rich to all who call upon him. You get rich by calling upon him. While you call upon him by believing in his name for unto salvation, you get saved. Thereafter, you get temporal riches and eternal riches. There may be blessings, there may be wealth, there may be prosperity, there may be longevity. Everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Joel 2.32, we just went over. Now we go to 10.14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, without preaching, it's going backwards, showing you how do you get that? Well, so first of all, this has to happen first. How shall they preach unless they're sent? You have to be sent. Uh, you have to know something. You have to know the gospel. Then you have to be sent. You have to explain explain the gospel. Then the other person has to hear it and believe it and to get saved unto eternal life and then call in the name of the Lord for what? Temporal blessings, eternal rewards, deliverance from an early physical death. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace will bring good news of good things. It all starts with the gospel, and deliverance comes thereafter once you believe in the gospel. The phrase rendered, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, in Romans 10, 14, restricts the population of individuals who are in a position to call in the name of the Lord for salvation from temporal destruction to individuals who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ unto or for an eternal righteousness from God for eternal life. Two kinds of salvation. Are you getting this? This is all over the Bible. James chapter 2, the same problem. People misconstrue. Faith without works is dead. Yes, your faith got your salvation. But without works, your faith is dead, inactive. And you need to move on in the Christian life. Abraham was justified by faith alone, it says in James chapter 2. If you read the whole thing, read all of James chapter 2, not just a section of it, not a verse. He was declared justified by faith alone. Thereafter, 
because of what he did with Isaac and other things, one faithful thing after another, he was declared to be the friend of God. You don't declare an unbeliever to be the friend of God until he becomes friendly and faithful as a believer. As a, a brand new believer, all you are is born again believer, but you still have the same old junky sin nature that you had before. Now you need to have your work in progress. Two kinds of salvation are therefore in view. Calling on the name of the Lord for deliverance from temporal destruction, which must be preceded by what? Believing in him unto eternal life, which is dependent upon hearing of the, word, of the Lord by a preaching of the gospel by those who are sent. Do you get it? If you didn't bother to read all, up to this point, you're making a big mistake. And you're going you're gonna to pay for it. Maybe law, not any salvation. Maybe without any rewards. By the way, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring good news of good things. Where does that come from? Isaiah 52, 7. Wow, it's been there all the time, hasn't it? Good, good idea to study Isaiah and then see how Paul and some of the other authors of the New Testament Greek Bible use these wonderful quotations. Note that the Greek participle phrase in Romans 10, 14, rendered above without preaching is literally apart from preaching, wherein the word kerosontes refers to the proclamation of the gospel, which is not limited to preachers. Calling on the Lord for deliverance from temple destruction must be preceded by believing in him for eternal life, which is dependent upon hearing of the Lord by a preaching of the gospel by those whom God sent. Scripture asks the question, how then shall I call on him in whom they have not believed? Is it to say that one must believe in the Lord in order to be in a position to call on his name for deliverance from temporal destruction? It goes on to ask another question. How then, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? People say, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's a good teacher. You haven't heard the gospel yet. You're not saved. You may think you are. But if you haven't got the information of what the gospel is, oh, it differs from church to church. No, it doesn't differ. If that's not a church, if they don't have the gospel right, they're acting like they're saved, but they're not. They don't have the gospel right. If you think you have to make Jesus the Lord of your life in order to be saved, you're not Christian. And how shall they believe in him but who they have not heard as if, if to say that one must hear of the Lord relative to the gospel of eternal life before one can believe in him, before one can call on his name? And then a third question is posed. And how shall they hear of the Lord without preaching as if to say that there must be preaching about the Lord with respect to the gospel of salvation unto for eternal life performed by someone in order to hear of the Lord and believe in him relative to that end? How many people have I met over these years and they think they got the gospel and they got four or five sentences that describe what they think the gospel is and none of them cover his, his payment for sins on the cross. So they don't have the gospel. So to call in the name of the Lord, the Lord himself, for temporal salvation, one must first believe in the Lord for an eternal righteousness from God for eternal life, which first one must hear about him relative to that end, which first there must be someone sent by God who preaches that message to one. Just go and open up your Bible, Romans 10, 9 and 10, and read beyond that to the end. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Hence, two kinds of salvation are in view in Romans 10, 15. First, in time is what? Salvation from eternal condemnation, destiny heaven, unto or for an eternal righteousness from God, resulting in eternal life. Residence in heaven. An eternal kingdom of God, millennial kingdom. Then there comes... The opportunity for one now that he has become a believer to be saved from temporal destruction and premature physical death by calling on the Lord on uh, his name in the sense of confessing or acknowledging his lordship and capacity to rule in one's temporal life by his power, authority, and righteousness. Now, coupled with this is what? When you're following his instructions and becoming a, a better Christian, growing as a Christian, what do you get in eternity? Eternal rewards! Why not get them? He's blessing you with his grace, <clears throat> enabling you to do these things with direction and circumstance and the spiritual gift and dwelling Holy spirits and so on. And then on top of that, he gives you a reward for what he's done in you. Individuals, point C. 
must be sent by the grace and authority of God to preach the gospel of eternal life in order for one to hear the gospel message so one can believe in the Lord for the free gift of eternal life so that in turn one is in a position to call on the name of the Lord for salvation unto, from temporal destruction.